Okay, we are going to learn today to count possibilities, um, which is kind of just a mathematical way of saying um, we're going to learn possible outcomes, uh, learn how many different ways things can happen. Um, and before we get started, I just want to say that my husband is outside cutting the grass right now, right outside the window, so we're going to probably hear the lawnmower coming and going as he passes by my window here. So anyway, uh, let's get back to the task at hand. Uh, first off, let's, talk, let's just start off right with a problem. You guys have seen these problems before. Um, we're going to do it kind of the long way, and I'm going to teach you a shorter way to do it. Um, but we got to tie it back to the long way so we understand why the short way works. Um, okay, first off, you've seen these problems. If we say, okay, you've got two shirts, you've got a red and a blue, and you have three pairs of pants, a pair of khakis, a pair of jeans, and a pair of black pants, um, how many different outfits can we make? Now, you probably already know the answer to this question, but uh, bear with me. Um, so what that means is that I have two decisions to make here. What kind of shirt? what kind of pair of pants. And for the first decision, I have two different ways I can make that decision. Sorry, let me pick my pen here. I can pick the red or I can pick the blue. Okay, I have two choices to make for that first. Now, once I've picked red, I have three pairs of pants I can pick. So I can pick a pair of khaki, a pair of jeans, or the pair of black pants. And if I chose blue, I have those same three options. Okay, now this is called a tree diagram. Now I have my khakis, my jeans, and my black pants. So if you think about this, I have red with khakis, red with a pair of jeans, and red with black pants. Okay, those are my three choices there. And then I have blue shirt khaki, blue shirt with jeans, and blue shirt with black pants. Now if I added another choice in here, say a pair of shoes, um, say I said, okay, now we have uh, two pairs of shoes we could wear. Um, we can wear gym shoes, I don't know what you guys call them, my husband calls them sneakers. I think that's silly. Uh, we call them gym shoes, tennis shoes. Uh, and then you've got a pair of, uh, we'll say you've got a pair of Sperry's here also that you can wear. Is that Y apostrophe S? Whatever. We're going to go with G and S here. Then it turns out we would add another decision in here. And every decision now would have two more. We would basically multiply the six original outcomes and we would double that number because now we would have for red, red shirt khaki pants would now have gym shoes or Sperry's. So we double the number of outcomes and we would have the same thing going on here. I'm not going to finish that. So essentially what you see, when you have three choices right here, we had shirt, we had pants, we have shoes. When you have three choices, the number of outfits you can come up with is the number of shirts that you have, for us it was two, times the number of pants you had, for us it was three, and the number of shoes that you had, for us it was two. And for us that's two times three times two, we have 12 outfits. And if you look, that's how many of the final uh, branch of our tree, that's how many outcomes we would have. Red khaki gym shoes, red khaki sperries red jeans gym shoes, red jeans Sperry's, and on and on. You see how the pattern goes. So at the end of the day, I would have had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve outcomes, and that's what I came up with my mathematical answer. So again, this is the long way. That's not what we're going to do. We're going to do the short way, okay? So let's go and look at some other types of problems. What happens if we talk about um, organizing things? Um, what if we have a bunch of books on a shelf? We have eight books on a shelf. Eight books, oops, I put an extra little bump in there, on a shelf. Still getting used to writing on this. And we want to organize them and we want to know how many different possible orderings are there. We're going to put all eight books on the shelf. 
So that means I have eight decisions to make. I have to decide which book is going to go in that first position, which book's going to go in the second, which is going to go in the third, which is going to go in the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and then finally the last book. So I've got eight decisions. All right, I, I could make a tree of this. Um, actually, this really wouldn't be suited to our tree now that I think about it. But um, it's the same type of thing. I'm trying to make eight decisions. So if you think about that as eight decisions, and we want to know how many possible outcomes there are, we need to look at how many ways we have to make each of the eight decisions, and then we'll multiply that to get our total number of arrangements. So when we have eight books on the floor, how many different books could I possibly put in that first position? Eight, right? When I have, now I've put one in place and I've got seven on the floor. So that means now I have seven choices to make. Okay, this is going to look disgusting, so I'm not even gonna go there. Um, but now I have six books. I got two books on the shelf. I've got six books on the floor. So I have six ways I can make that decision. Now three on the shelf, five on the floor, five ways, and four ways, and three ways, and two ways. And finally we have one last loan book and it's the only one that can possibly go in that last position so we end up with a one here. So we end up with eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. And we call that, because this, this happens a lot, um, especially in probability problems, and so we've, uh, we've kind of nicknamed this, whenever this happens, we call it factorial, and we represent it with a, a, uh, an, an exclamation point. So this exclamation point means factorial. Now, that's neither here nor there. Um, we don't, we don't really, it doesn't, we don't even really have to use factorial if we don't want to. We can always do this. Uh, it always will work. Just sometimes when you get to really big numbers, it's kind of a pain. Once you get to anything over 10, it's really a pain to just type 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 in your calculator. So we actually have a button for this on the calculator. If you go to um, the PRB button on your calculator, um, I think it's in the second row, maybe the second or third button. I don't have one of these calculators here. If you press that, that stands for probability. If you press that button, uh, it will show, it'll have a screen will come up and it, I think it, belie I believe it says NP, NPR, uh, NCR, oops, NCR, let me erase that real quick. I'll erase these while I'm at it. That was hideous. I don't know what I was thinking there. Um, okay, so we've got NPR, NCR, and then down or over to the right, you'll see an exclamation point. So you're going to need to hit the arrow buttons to get over to select this. So if you want 8 factorial, you'll type 8, then you'll hit PRV, then you will arrow over to this and you will press that and as soon as you do 8 factorial will show in the window and then you're going to press the equal sign and it will give you the answer um, which I, I don't even have a calculator out so I don't really know what that answer is um, but that shows you how to do factorial now let's move on to um, other types of problems you might have what happens if I say I have eight books Okay, so I'm gonna make this problem just a little bit different. Eight books, and I want to read two of them. And the order for some reason matters. Um, and I'm gonna say, okay, I've got eight books. How many different ways can I read two of them? How many different ways can I read two of them? So, how many decisions am I making? I am making two decisions: which book to read first, which book to read second. Okay, and I have to think about how many different ways can I read, or how many different books could I possibly read first when I've got eight books to choose from? Well, simple. I have eight different books I could read. Now, once I get to the second one here, I say how many different books do I have as an option to be my second book? Well, in this case, I'm not going to read that eighth or that first book that I just read. I'm not going to read that book again. So I have seven other books 
that I could read. So it turns out uh, 56 would be my answer. I have, there's 56 different ways I could take two books from eight if I wanted to know one, that the first one was different than the second one. Okay, um, let's look at some problems here like you will be seeing on these worksheets. Okay, uh, how many ways can you, can the letters M, C, and G be ordered without repeats? So in this case, I'm trying to order one, two, three letters. I'm trying to make three decisions. Three decisions, three choices, however you want to think about that. And the question is, how many different choices do I have? How many options could go in this first position? Well, I got the letter M, I got the letter C, I got the letter G. There are three options for the first position. Now that I've used up one of these three, and it doesn't matter which one, how many choices do I have left? And it said without repeats. So that tells me if I picked M first, I can't pick it again. So that means I have two options. And then finally, now I've picked two of the letters. Maybe I've picked C and G. Um, I only have one letter left, so there's only one way. So that is three factorial. Whoops, ignore that, zero, that little dot there. Um, so three times two times one is equal to six. So that's going to be my answer there. Um, so all of these problems in, on this page are going to be like that. Now when you move to the next page, um, they are just a little bit different. Here we have six people walk into a fast food restaurant at the same time. How many different ways can the first two be served? So I don't care about the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth person. I care about the first two. I have two choices, two options, two ways to pick the first two. Um, so, but how many possible, I've got six people walking in, how many possibilities do I have to serve for the first one? I have six possibilities. How many possibilities do I have to serve the second one? Well, I'm not going to serve the first guy again, so now I only have five people left that need, uh, need my help. So I end up with six times five. So it's just going to be 30. There are 30 ways I can pick the first two. Hope that helps. Good luck and uh, we'll talk again tomorrow. Thanks.